What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 28 and we start today's episode off here with an email from our assistant manager telling us that Moussa Dembele is a lad that shows a lot of promise but he's not really in the first team picture right now so we should consider sending him out on loan to maximise his development or something like that. I kind of gave up reading halfway through because I realised it was a load of rubbish. Uh, another one of those emails which unfortunately is coded into the game and it just makes no sense whatsoever because, you know, this is the second time it's happened this season. First we would say Maximi now with Dembele. Apparently our assistant manager, our number two in command, is worried about one of our players' development even though he's growing in terms of his attributes and he's getting loads of game time as he's in the first 11. So yeah, kind of gave up halfway through reading that. But either way, just going to ignore that one as it means absolutely nothing. So we're taking on PSG here for the first game of today's episode and there are two games in today's episode and they are the two biggest games of this season. So taking on our rivals here at PSG, really looking forward to this game. If we win this game, we'll go five points clear of them with eight games to go but if they win they'll go ahead of us and into third place leapfrog us and occupy that final Champions League place so coming to this game here a massive game we faced PSG three times already this season uh, all of them away from home uh, we lost two and won one two of those of course coming in the cup the win was in the Coupe Nationale uh, around the 16 stage or quarter final stage but uh, still taking on uh, PSG here we had a really bright start to this game and in the 29th minute we'd have the chance to take the lead for a spot kick as well Marquinhos, the Brazilian centre-half, takes down St. Maximin and gets a book in as well. And PSG didn't really seem to be complaining too much, but to be honest, you see this on the replay here. It was one of those penalties where as Matuidi comes across here, I don't know what he's trying to gesture to the referee, but I just don't understand why there were four players surrounding the referee. It was such an obvious penalty. St. Maximin cuts inside, Marquinhos dives in from behind. There's clear contact there, and it's a definite penalty. I mean, I don't know why they're complaining about that one. It is a definite penalty and a chance for us to take the lead on the stroke of the half an hour mark to say Maximin gets fouled there. So penalty to us. Thierry Ambrose is going to stand up and take it. We know how reliable he is from the spot. I don't think he's missed a single penalty unless he's chipped it down the middle. It's Ambrose against Trap, and he does send the ball in to the back of the net. Trap does go the right way. I was about to say sent it the wrong way, forgot. Uh, Trap does go the right way, but he dives underneath the ball as Ambrose goes to that top corner. And penalties in this game, I swear, if you put them in the top corner, nine times out of ten, you will probably score. Goalkeepers rarely ever get their height right when diving for the ball for penalties. So top corner always instead of bottom corner. Corner. That's my tip there on how to score more penalties against the AI. But uh, still, PSG did have a good chance to respond and equalise here in the 41st minute. But this header went over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And at half time, I thought we were playing better than our rivals as well. I thought we had a better first, uh, first uh, half and deserved to be in front. In the second half, the aim is after the restart. We went in search of a second goal. Ambrose goes down the left hand side, takes it around Marquinhos and cuts inside to shoot. But if it wasn't for a great save by Trap, he would have doubled our lead and got his second goal of the game. But it was still Paris FC 1 at PSG 0. But in this game, I realised that after the last three meetings against PSG, the last meeting was a victory, I realised that I just couldn't play like we did in the first two games against PSG, and that was just hold on to a one-goal lead or just try and control the game with uh, simple, neat passes, trying to retain possession. Instead, I tried to attack in this game and go for a second goal and go for the goal. It will probably be the dagger and kill the game off. And because of that, we were playing better for the entirety of the game. And I finally realised that now because you guys would have seen in the first two meetings against PSG, we lost both of the games, and I said to myself, it's my fault. You know, it's my fault because it's the way I'm playing. I'm not attacking them enough. I'm just calming the play down, stopping the play, really. Basically playing the game at a walking pace and uh, not allowing PSG to try and get too many chances on the board. That doesn't work against a great side like PSG. I realised in this game, in the last one as well, if we want to beat these sides, if we want to beat our rivals, if we want to become the better Parisian side, what we've got to do is show that we want to become the better Parisian side. We've got to start attacking more. We've got to start going at them. That's what what we did in that game, we won by a goal to nil, courtesy of that Thierry Ambrose penalty. We hit the post, Trap made a couple of good saves as well, and I think, to be honest, we were full value for that win as well. So final score was Paris FC 1 at PSG 0, and, you know, I've, I've realised now, I've realised that that's what we got to do. We've really got to start going at teams, and look, we may be the underdogs in terms of the overalls of the players and the squads we have when facing those sort of teams. Be it home or away, we still probably, uh, probably would have considered, uh, considered the underdogs in that game, but we still 
still got to attack them. We still got to play like we're not the underdogs. We're the team that are the favourites if we want to get the three points. That's what we did in that game. We got the three points. And that means that after four games against PSG this season, we've played four, obviously, and uh, we've lost two. We also won two as well. And the last two have been the wins. The key component there with the last two being the wins is because of the play style being changed. Attacking teams. And right now, with eight games to go, as you can see, we're going to the second game of the episode. It is the biggest game of the season. We take on Monaco away from home, and they are just two points ahead of us. So with eight games to go, if we win this one, we will go top of the table by a single point. So this game is going to be massive. The biggest game of the season, following on from what was the biggest game of the season in the last game. So a massive game here, but sadly for us, just 21 minutes in, we get off to the worst possible start. JJ takes down Lassina Traore, one of my favorite strikers in FIFA. He gets tripped by JJ here, and I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that that is a penalty. He body checked it, really. It wasn't a trip, was it? He body checked and just came across and said, no way, mate, I'm not allowing you a shot at goal because you'll probably score. So penalty to Monaco. Traore is going to stand up and take it, and the Ivorian has a great chance of making it 1-0 to Monaco. So it's the giant 6 foot 8 striker against that 18-year-old goalkeeper, Barmy. He's had a fantastic season. You guys know I rate him. And this is exactly why. Barmy makes the save. And in the biggest game of the season, Barmy stops Traore from the penalty and keeps it at 0-0. It is the biggest game of the year. If we win it, we go top of the table by a point. And already Monaco won a penalty. But Barmy, having a fantastic first full season, pulls off the save from 12 yards and turns it behind for a corner. What a stop there. And it's still Monaco 0, Paris FC 0. In the 28th minute, they almost scored a good chance there. But that show went over the bar and behind for a goal kick and on the stroke of half time we had our first real chance of the game. Boga striking his free kick from range, putting it harmlessly over to Bardo and behind for a goal kick. So half time it was still nil-nil but to be honest Monaco were playing far better and I wanted to attack them in this game but the problem was I couldn't get the ball off them to get them any attacks. But in the second half he just passed the Yamak, we could have a good chance here as Boga gets on the ball. He plays it out wide towards St. Maximin who flicks it on. Ambrose gets the wrong side of the ball. Hello Pearson goes for goal but I completely messed up the finish and rifled a half volley over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So it was still Monaco nil, Paris FC nil, but unfortunately for us with 14 and a half minutes to go as the game was still deadlocked at nil nil. A draw would not be disastrous we'd still be two points behind with seven games to go. Unfortunately Boss Scagli does just what JJ did. Takes down a Monaco player. This was on the line and the referee saw it as a penalty. I'm not going to complain again. I think it was a foul and it was on the line as well. So that is a penalty and Monaco for the second time win themselves a spot kick. Traore funny enough, he missed the first one. Got substituted just before he could stand up and take it. The Monaco manager taking no chances. Broad on the substitute he took the penalty himself and with his first touch the number 11 makes it Monaco 1, Paris FC 0. So Barmy pulled off the heroics in the first half. Sadly he can't do it again. Lightning doesn't strike twice and Monaco redeemed themselves with just 12 minutes to go now in the game. And it was also how the game would finish as well. Final score, Monaco 1, Paris FC 0 and I'm absolutely heartbroken because I'll be honest here, we didn't play well and I didn't play well. They dominated possession. They had more shots, more on target. We didn't really have too many opportunities. They had two penalties. One, of course, being saved by Barmy in the first half. They played very well. They deserved a win. I'm not going to deny that. They deserved a win. But if we just got ourselves a point in that game, we'd still be only two points behind with seven games to go. And we've actually got a pretty decent run in as well. We're facing a lot of teams that are towards the bottom end of the table. So, you know, I wouldn't say that uh, chances would be with us and we'd be the favourites, but we certainly have a really decent chance of going on to win the title. But sadly for us, that loss does now mean that Monaco are five points clear with seven games to go. It's not all over. It's not all over. There's still seven games to go. There's still time for us to work it round and get ourselves back to the top of the table. But, you know, a draw in that game would not have been disastrous. A win, of course, would have been amazing. You know, going one point clear with seven games to go and having the easier run in. But, you know, now it's five points. I'm not entirely sure. Should we really be settling for a Champions League place now? Or I should say trying to get a Champions League place now and finish in second or third? Or can we try and keep the dream alive with seven games to go and pull off what would be one of my biggest achievements ever and win the league title with Paris FC in our first full year in the league and season. We'll have to wait and see though, but uh, still falling out. Look at the use comment for your report and also look at the squad report and the league table as well. Uh, obviously a Coupe Nationale semi-final still to come against Toulouse, so I'm still really excited for that as well. But of course the league still being our main focus, you will see by the league table, we have dropped to third now. We're two points behind Stad Rene and of course five points behind Monaco who just beat us as well. We are still ahead of PSG though who are in fourth. So, you know, Champions League is still a definite possibility. You know, we are still, as things stand, 
in the driver's seat for a Champions League place. We just got to make sure we don't have any more slip ups like that game against Monaco if we do want to at least, and at the very least, that's what I'm going for now, at the very least, cement a top three finish. But we'll have to wait see what happens though. It's going to be a very exciting end to the season. There are just three episodes left, 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 left. Don't miss any of them. Seven games to go in the league and the Coupe National semi final as well. It's going to be a frantic finish. Don't miss any of the remaining episodes in the season. It should be really good fun. But thank you for watching this episode though. If you have enjoyed it, then please do leave a like. So it's of course much appreciated. I really top my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.